and you ended up in Baltimore, mm -hmm. where you had your history, as you just said. Uh, is that why? Or is it also because it's co convenient for all of you? Or yeah, I think the history, the history made it a convenient place for us to be. Just in terms of the, you know, a lot of people had different um, kind of outside responsibilities or pressures. Like Dave leaving New York was a big thing for him. And, you know, Noah bringing his children for temporarily, you know, his wife and his kids who are Portuguese to the States. And I had a child. And um, so there was going to be a lot of things sort of interfering, I think, with our normal routine, which is either working at home when we have the time or if we do get together, sometimes we, we isolate, you know, like if we go to the studio, we don't bring any family members. So this was going to be, you know, I think we just needed a place where we could minimize that stuff. So going to a city where we were familiar with it, you know, make finding places to live easier. Um, our moms were there to babysit, you know, things like that made it a good place to be. How was the situation? You had a studio where you could isolate, isolate and then all you had your own place mm -hmm. we could go to afterwards? Or? Yeah, we had a practice space at Josh's mom's house um, and he lived there. So I guess, you know, he couldn't isolate really. But uh, yeah, and then, so we would work kind of like normal work days and then at night go home to our, our people. And then, uh, but for, well, that was just for writing the record when we actually recorded. Um, so we didn't have a studio there, we had a rehearsal space, but then you know, we went to the studio in Texas to record, and that was like a, you know, a month or more, a month and a half of just, like, we were not with anybody else except each other and, you know, people that worked at the studio to actually get this stuff on tape. Is it possible to really isolate yourself and focus on what you're doing when you're, you know your kid is somewhere near you? I mean, I, it, maybe not entirely, but when you know that they're with, your parents or something, you know, then I, that's, I th again, I think why Baltimore was a good choice because it took away that stress, you know, I didn't have to think about a babysitter I didn't know or something, you know what I mean? Something Dave, like why was it hard for you to leave New York? Uh, it actually wasn't really hard to leave New York. It was harder to go, the uncertainty of going back to Baltimore, just what it would be. I was kind of ready to go, to go to New York. I mean, the, the transition was hard, you know, just moving from a city crowded city to like out in the country in Baltimore County, you know, but also just uh, moving to, to similar places to where I grew up, you know what I mean? Like living really close to where I went to high school and just like driving those haunted roads, you know what I mean? It was really bizarre and surreal. So that aspect of it was kind of difficult, but um, it, was, it was also cool in that my girlfriend had never really spent a lot of time in Baltimore before, so she was kind of really super into it, you know, and the fact that it was really pretty and that kind of, you know what I mean, that was really cool about Baltimore. So That must have helped you as well, that she was so enthusiastic. Yeah, yeah totally. But uh, are you very melancholic? Because you sound like you, like the, the, the trip down memory lane was hard on you somehow. Uh, I mean, it wasn't like, you know, really, really hard, you know. It's kind of a best of both worlds. I guess so much stays the same, you know, but I've changed so much. So in that sense, it was a little nostalgic and, and sad in that kind of way, but that can be good too, you know. In those first few months of 2011, uh, what, what did the room look like you worked in? Where was it? It was a barn um, type of building that Josh and his friend built for his mom. Um, and it was pretty, it's pretty stripped down bare bones, just a carpeted floor and a, a couple shelves and a sink. <laughs> Not much else, or a <laughs> little, little refrigerator and a bathroom, yeah. And you crammed all, all the... Yeah, there yeah we were room. pretty much crowded right amps, up on each other. Yeah. And wires. Staring, all staring at each other. We'd play like looking at each other, kind of, with our amps around. Probably not much yeah, different than more space setup. than the yeah. four of us are sitting at. Did you, did you bring out all the equipment you had, or how did it work? Did you make a selection? Uh, we brought out all the amps we have, probably, and, and, and uh, yeah, and just kind of, of had just, yeah. Yeah, just decided beforehand what, what instruments we would be playing for the most part. We kind of all individually get an idea in our head that this is kind of what we want to bring to the table or to the, to, the, to the palette, you know, and then that happens. Which was what? I played keyboards mostly and some guitar, actually. I've been working with some sequencers, so I played that a little bit, too. Um, Noah really wanted to just play live drums and sang as well, so he did that and some electronics. Um, um, Josh played guitar mostly and did some sample stuff. 
And then Brian, I don't know. I did sample stuff and uh, I played like bass pedals, like a foot, like a Moog Taurus kind of thing. So synthesizer stuff like that. And 